Uh, first of all, the news of the day, so to speak, Andy Pettit solidifies that fourth spot in the rotation. How much, in your opinion, does he solidify it? Well, I think he does a lot. You know, and Andy wanted to be a Yankee. He signaled to them that he was probably not going to go anywhere else. It's probably hurt his leverage in terms of negotiating a contract. But nonetheless, Andy wanted to pitch in the new stadium. Even though he had a bad second half last year, he still won 14 games. I think he's a big part of that rotation. And plus, he's left-handed and has that great pickoff move as well. It all went down a little weird, though, Jack, because we thought that $10 million offer was there for one year. But but he ends up taking a lesser deal base, but with a chance for more incentives. Did that surprise you? Well, it I didn't surprise me because the Yankees took that offer off the table. And as David said, this was the place Andy wanted to pitch. So to come back here, he had to swallow his pride and swallow the guaranteed money a little bit more. It goes down to five and a half million. With incentives, he'll have the chance to get that up around 10 if he pitches the kind of season that he had last year. But it ended up being the kind of negotiation that I think Andy Pettit might wonder, why didn't I just take that first offer? And teams obviously, I think, like lower base, incentive-based deals to a certain extent. What do you think about this deal, George? I don't think I would have done it and I, for the simple reason that he doesn't ever want to come out of a game, never wants to miss a start. Now he's pitching for money, and there's no reason in the world for him to say he's hurt now. He was hurt last half of second, second half of last year. Now it's money that it's on the table, and he's never going to say he's hurt, and I think that'll wind up hurting the team. The flip side of that is he's a better option than Phil Hughes and Aceves. All right, so obviously we know this about Andy and the way he pitches. He has a lot of pride, and he had to swallow some pride in order to take this deal. He admitted that. He also admitted at a press conference this week that although it was a little tough to sit on the sidelines for so long, he was also intrigued as a baseball fan by watching all the Yankees offseason moves. You know, as I'm sitting here in Texas watching, you know, them sign that, I think most people might think that, you know that maybe I was getting upset or bitter, but for me it was it was exciting and more importantly I, it was I, you know I, it was more anxious for me to try to get a deal done and try to hopefully get something settled as far as on my end so I could I could be part of this. I'd be lying if I didn't say, well, heck, you know, is this really going to ever is this going to get done because it was taking so long and I was very very impatient and it tried my patience, but again, I just uh, trusted that you know things would work out and. And, and, you know, the whole time, the whole time, Brian Cashman, you know, told me how much that the organization wanted me back and everyone wanted me back. And I trusted him that, you know, that he was telling me the truth. And, um, you know, and, and, and I would, you know, was letting them know that, you know, if you guys want me back, I, you know, um, y'all are mine to have. And, and I want, you know, I don't want to go anywhere else. So he'll be back in pinstripes, and of course, this is his body of work with the Yankees. Four-time world champion, two-time 20-game winner. He's been an all-star. He has 178 wins with the Yankees. That's fourth in franchise history. Had 14 last season, and George brings up a good point. He was injured part of that time, but still good enough and effective enough to get 14 wins. Do you think he can do that again? What do you see about him that makes you believe he can do it again this year? Well, what I saw last year was, you know, when, with Molina, the catcher, obviously backing up uh, when Posada went down. Andy Pettit's got to use both sides of the plate. You see Molina setting up way off the plate there, getting him to use that backdoor cutter. That makes the inside much more effective when he does go inside. Once again, right there, inside with the cutter down and in. Molina works both sides of the plate. He got into a good rapport with Molina last year. Andy's got to pitch inside, outside, up and down to be effective. When he gets cutter happy, when he throws to one side of the plate all the time, that's when he gets in trouble. And the thing that he does, Bob, by having him back is we saw what happened with the young pitchers last year. The Yankees can't go in relying on the Phil Hughes and the Seveses. If they get something from those guys and Ian Kennedy, it's a luxury at this point. But with those other guys that they've, they've added this year, they're cl clearly trying to make a run at it again. They can't not make the playoffs. They can't rely on the young kids. Okay, but now his return brings up an interesting question from a lot of Yankees fans out there who say, really one through four, and if you want to consider it one through five are taken care of. But if that five, or even eventually the fourth spot in the rotation is Jabba Chamberlain, why not put Jabba in the bullpen now? You've got a solid four. Why not give that fifth spot maybe to Phil Hughes? And George, I'm going to start with you. The debate begins now. Is Jabba better in the eighth inning or being that fifth starter? Bullpen. Eighth inning, that's where they should leave him. That's where he should spend his whole career. And I'm not sure people would have said that if Andy didn't come back, if there wasn't that maybe a little more certainty in that fourth spot, but it feels like there is. Jack, what do you think? It, it's more of a debate now because of what you just said, but I'll disagree with uh, George and say that I want the guy who's been groomed as a starter, who has four pitches, who is going to give you, when he finally is able to get to that point, 200 innings a year instead of 70 innings a year. I want him to have that 
role. I want him to make more of an impact there. If you believe in moving him to the setup spot, why isn't every great young starter moved into a setup role? But l let me just throw this at you. Some people will say, well, if you believe that Jabba locks down the eighth and Mo locks down the ninth, you've got these horses in CC Sabathia, at least Wong. We're not sure about Burnett yet, but he can give you, get you to that sixth, seventh inning. You've got a shutdown game. You get length out of those starters, those new starters. You have Jabba in the eighth, Mo in the ninth. You're taken care of. Is that a good argument or not a good argument? It's a solid argument. It really is. That's what makes this such an interesting debate. You could really make strong points on both sides of the issue. My point is the best closer on the market this last year was K-Rod. He signed a, a three-year deal for $37 million. The best starter was CC Sabathia. He got $160 million. You tell me what's more valuable. You know, I'm a little biased, obviously, being a former starter, but... You know, if Jabba can be a starter and be a top-line front-end starter, that is much more valuable than a setup guy. Now, with that being said, you're risking his health. That's the one thing. If he starts and he blows out again, you might be jeopardizing his career long-term. That's what makes this debate so interesting. Now, he was injured a couple times last year. Is there anybody here who believes that he can be a 200-inning guy? He won't probably get there this year. Jack, I'll start with you, but can he be that workhorse that they need him to be? I, I know what George thinks. It's going to be no, <laughs> but I, I don't think he can do it this year because I don't think the Yankees will allow him to make that kind of leap. And let's not forget here, as we're talking about that role, Brian Bruni, of course, has to prove himself, but Brian Bruni did a good job in that role last year. And if you look at the numbers that he put up, they're not too different from the numbers Jabba had put up up a year earlier so I think Jabba will eventually get to that innings point but I still like him in the rotation final thought on this if you want Jabba to go to the bullpen who's your number five then is it a Savis is it Phil Hughes Ian Kennedy Phil Coke uh, leader uh, the first guy be used then a Savez. the other two guys no um, but I mean he can impact 80 games or he can impact 35 and possibly break down there's the argument right there and the debate rages on